content is the same way. There are people out there who really feel like I don't need no more exposure. So, you know, it don't matter if they don't credit me for being inspired or, you know, doing something that I do. And it's like, well, I don't know who told you, child. I don't know the impression that you're giving, but I do. I need it. <laughs> What's up, cousins? Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time visiting my channel, you are in for a good one because you get to hear my country ass talk today, <laughs> okay? Um, a lot of times I do voiceovers and things like that with these hairstyle videos and um, I know I have really been jipping you guys on the curly hair routines like sis, cousin, we love you but you know, we wanna see some curly hair routines, I get it. So just for you, you, and especially you, I am going to be doing a quick little curly hair, um, let's say winter curly hair routine. I don't know. We're going to be doing a wash and go. Um, and as you guys can see, my hair is color treated and I've been doing, you know, testing out some different colors. I don't know if you guys can see, I have like some fading red going on if you guys saw my previous video where my hair was super intense as you guys can see it is starting to die down and kind of fading into a brown color which I love and then um, I'll probably kind of like strip that out and put one more maybe colorful rinse on it before I go back jet black but that's neither here nor there okay so today um we are going to be talking about stealing content okay let's just rip the band-aid off, okay? There has been a lot of discussion on social media, particularly on Twitter and TikTok recently in regards to the stealing of content, the giving the appropriate credit, uh, you know, all the other things that tie into it depending on who is stealing your content, whether or not, you know, they are appropriating your culture or they are biting off our culture and profiting off of our ideas without giving us credit. That is, you know, a wide range of things that fall under the umbrella of stealing content. So um, I thought that this would be a good thing to talk about because this is something that I have experienced myself and I've talked to you guys about and just something that recently, um, and I've touched on this a bit in some previous like chit chatty videos. Uh, but this is something recently that I have even had to uh, look at the way that I approach it. Um, just if I'm going to keep my sanity. <laughs> so if you care, or even if you don't, and you just want to see what I do to my hair, stay tuned today. I'm not even really gonna use the product combo and I'm, I'm getting all sidetracked. This is why I do voiceovers because I have all this extra blah, 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 to say. So yeah, now my hair is clean and I did go ahead and do a hot oil treatment because like I was saying in the hot oil treatment video, um, my hair's just, you know, been a little dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and section it off so I can move through this wash and go fairly quickly. So my leave-in conditioner is already in my hair. And of course I am using the Paul Mitchell, the conditioner as my leave-in. And for my styler today, I'm going to be using the Aussie Instant Freeze Gel, the 20 hour max hold. This is like the three out of four ticks maximum hold gel. And I have used this on my channel before. So if you haven't seen that video, I'll put it in the cards and in the description. Let my hair t-shirt dry probably for about 15 minutes before I am styling just to get a little bit of that water out of my hair. And also because this gel is a thick gel, but it's, it's not like, you know, an eco styler gel or anything. So um, I wanted to actually be able to grip my strands, but um, still kind of going for like a fluffy wash and go. So basically, like I was saying in the intro um, right now, you know, what everybody is talking about is... Um, and I think I said her name wrong in the intro. I think it's like Jalea. I still may be saying it wrong, but, um, essentially Jalea is a young dancer and choreographer and she made a dance and, um, I think she put it on like Triller. So, um, a lot of these apps, you know, a lot of us still don't even know nothing about, but I've seen Trillers and 
from what I gather about the Triller app is essentially it's maybe a less social version or like a more um, underground version of TikTok. Like it's same concept, um, short clips to music and, you know, people be dancing and doing funny stuff, stuff like that. And so to my understanding, I think maybe she put it on there or something else. It may have been another app, but she put it on, she put her dance, her original dance on there and she did it with a friend and then it got transferred over to TikTok and suddenly the Charlie girl is doing the dance and she blows up, goes viral, you know, the rest is history. Now where there is some, um, I feel like misinformation or maybe like a gap in the story from what I gather, like if you just, if you just do a little bit of research, you know, just click around a little bit, people, you can usually find the full story and so I'm going to touch more on that so doing a, and I'm just making sure I'm working this into my hair because also I'm still getting um shed strands out of my hair so sometimes especially when I'm doing a fluffier wash and go and I'm not working with the heavy gel and I actually can rake my curls this is a great way for me to finger detangle and really get some of that shed hair out and I got a good deal of shed and I feel like but this is gonna, you know, it takes a little bit longer. So it's okay, cause this is a chit chat video. So doing a little research, it was basically just discovered that Charlie did not claim to create the dance. And she wasn't the one who initially like watered down the dance because I mean, obviously to anybody seeing it, the more popularized version is you know, a lot easier. It's a lot more watered down. I think it was just kind of assumed, not kind of, it definitely obviously was assumed that Charlie claimed and she was the one who watered down the choreography. When in reality, there's another video of like a couple or siblings or whatever they are to each other, where the first people who brought the dance over to TikTok and they brought it over in a simplified manner so i'm starting from my ends and then i work my way up when i'm finger detangling i start from my ends and work my way up even when i'm like working with product this is a lightweight product this is a heavy gel I, I work it in a little bit differently so if this is your first time visiting my channel child i got some good washing goes for you charlie either got the watered down version from them or somebody else who got it from them and then you know she did it and people i guess you know what they normally do they thought she was a cute little white girl she is she's cute like now the problem that people are having you know number one once it eventually comes out like the girl got a super bowl she got a super bowl i can't imagine how much imagine how much they paid that girl to be in that Super Bowl commercial at 15 years old. Um, or even, I mean, even just at 15 years old, just being excited about being able to be in the Super Bowl period. So after it gets bigger and bigger, people really start looking into it. And that's when it's revealed like, hey, this is the creator and she barely has, I don't know, however many followers. She, you know, people are barely, barely even know who she is. And meanwhile, you know, the girl who stole her content is, <laughs> you know, running up the bag on it. And so, you know, it was just this obviously like outrage and I get it. Like I get the outrage because, you know, it's just like, here we go again. Like on TikTok, you know, people have very strong opinions one way or the other in regards to whether or not charlie was wrong in you know how she got viral and whether or not it was a fluke because it's like the whole and that's the thing like about tiktok and like i was saying whether or not you <laughs> want to you know accept it or not it is tiktok is now officially a part of culture somebody who got famous from this app that you are refusing to admit to yourself exists or admit to yourself is a real thing um people are changing their lives on this app so um but the 
the concept, like the entire kind of concept of TikTok and the reason why TikTok is becoming and has blown up the way it is because it's a concept that we've never seen before. It is a literal, I feel like the, the most um, shareable, just the, the best way to really expose yourself and encourage people to share and co collaborate across content just, you know, with the sounds, like the whole concept of TikTok is taking a sound that is not yours and then creating content on top of that that is, you know, relatable or funny or inspiring or whatever. And so um, in a sense, the whole concept of TikTok is to steal somebody else's content, like the whole concept of it. And so it turned into this thing for TikTokers, almost like a the TikTok equivalent of freedom of speech or the TikTok equivalent of, you know, <laughs> rights our rights as a tiktoker to um, be able to continue to collaborate and you know use content without now it turning into this big political thing or this big um you know influencer or you know all about fame type of thing and so so i just wanted to come and talk to y'all i know it probably will sound like i'm being real rough in my hair maybe i am sure <laughs> Y'all thought I was going to say something else. <laughs> Maybe I am. <laughs> I, my, I know my ends are raggedy, okay? And so they need a trim. It ain't happened yet. So I might be being rough. Don't do it then. <laughs> if you feel like I'm being rough, don't do it. So obviously as a YouTuber, and um, it's so crazy, like sometimes when I try to categorize myself as like what level of influencer or what level of I don't know just what where I am how I can relate to a situation like before I you know step in and give my opinion on the situation I usually first ask like can I relate like can I relate to this because a lot of times people be giving their opinions on stuff that they can't even relate to so it's like why are you giving your opinion on a situation that you would never be in that you claim would never be you that you this that and the third like then it's like you are we already know how you feel about it like you can't relate to it so it's like it's unfair I feel like to then give your you know somewhat judgmental or biased opinion on something when you can't relate so and really relate to that the concept of whenever whatever i put out i want credit for it like i i that's why i did it like i mean we can just act like we do it for the love we do do it for the love of the art but we also want credit for it like if we didn't want people to know that we are the creators of what we create we would do it anonymously we would put a bag over our head we would you know not post to our own social medias or you know go under a pseudonym or whatever obviously whatever i do i want credit for it and i've experienced this like when certain things go viral like now i have probably three memes that i've made three or four memes that i've personally myself made and will put my tag handle instagram handle in it and then people will still repost it see my handle in the <laughs> picture and not tag and give me credit for it because it's a meme you know people don't particularly ever give credit for um the person who created a meme or in a meme because it's it's then it doesn't belong to you anymore so to speak it belongs to the internet like that's the whole reason you created the meme so people can use it and um in a relatable way and you know you just if you're gonna be using just a random meme oh my god if i had to tag the person like just these random memes out here you know just these memes that we love to use somebody created them like every single one of them like somebody created them the gifs that we use or the gifs <laughs> they're gifs <laughs> the gifs that we use somebody originally created them and good god if we had to credit somebody every single time <laughs> we use a meme it wouldn't be you know it just it's so tedious so um i had to break myself out of that because i, I would i would get like in my feelings feel away these natural hair pages 
reposting my meme with my face in it or my boyfriend's face in it or me, you know, lean back, pulling my hair with my tag in the picture and then don't tag me. They tag their business <laughs> and they tag their business in the picture to promote like I'm promoting or like I created that meme to promote for their business. So it's just levels to it because it's like, dang, you even using my meme to promote your business and I ain't even affiliated with you in any way. Like that's when it gets a little dangerous because it's like then people can use your content just because it's then went that viral and you don't even you know you got to check and it looked like you supporting them so somebody is going to you know the, the way that it got viral is it, it did start with you do you know what i'm saying so it's like in order for somebody to find it if you created it for people to find it and repurpose it if we don't want to call it still and find it and repurpose it or whatever um it still came from you so the receipt the paper trail is there that's how i had to start looking at it like there's always that paper trail there and it may take a second for people to you know trail back through it but when they do it's there and that's essentially what happened in this situation like yeah once she got bigger and bigger she spoke out on it or whatever and um you know people started tracing it back and had she not put the content out there there would have been nothing to trace back to so yeah it can be a little frustrating because you like dang so in the meantime if somebody else use my stuff and they blow up on it i really have no control over it and it's like yeah kind of like that's that is everything that you do in this life has a risk ratio and so that is the risk factor that you take any time you put your content out here i mean no matter how much you even credit yourself if you do everything in your power to make sure that you know people know that you are the creator of your content there is still the likelihood the high likelihood that somebody is going to you know be inspired by your work and create something similar to it and whether or not you know it's intentionally done because you know, sometimes, and I've said this before, this is why even myself, sometimes I have to go on a hiatus from watching a whole bunch of YouTube videos because, you know, without even knowing it now, your brain is storing that material and you subconsciously, you know, just start doing what is familiar to you, doing what you've seen, you know, saying something that somebody else has said or, you know, regurgitating an opinion or, you know, just a whole bunch of different stuff that you know sometimes you don't even realize you're doing it just because you spend so much time or too much time watching others and not enough like creating and then obviously there are those people who do take from you and feel like you don't and i'm gonna probably blow up in the mic but there are all those people who take from you and feel like you don't need the credit you know like people reuse a celebrity's stuff or you know download their music or whatever and they say this celebrity already got enough money they already got enough fame this person even you know instagram this person already got enough like so they don't need my life my little one like you know ain't gonna matter so i'm just gonna you know continue to be a ghost follower and continue to keep scrolling and content is the same way there are people out there who really feel like I don't need no more exposure. So, you know, it don't matter if they don't credit me for being inspired or, you know, doing something that I do. And it's like, well, I don't know who told you, child. I don't know the impression that you're giving, but I do. I need it. <laughs> I need it. So, um, there again, there are, to everything I'm saying, obviously there are levels to it. I can only speak to how I have decided to approach it in order to enjoy what I do, my my life. And, you know, so I'm not, you know, hell up at night holding negative energy towards something that I can't control. And the way that I do that is, and I, it's come from a combination of just listening to a lot of people, listening to Gary Vee, listening to um, a few other social media influencers and uh, reading different things. I read this book called Show Your Work. It was the first book I read this year. And um, it really really changed my life essentially in the the scope of how I have started and am intending to approach all 
my content, my career moving forward is just that your work is meant to be shared. And even in a sense, your work is meant to be stolen. Like literally in the book, it encourages you to let people steal your work because, you know, that's what you want to put it out there for. You want to put out your work so that it does touch people and inspire people. And then, um, you know, taking it just from a from the book concept onto a spirituality level, um, because for me, I am a spiritual being. So everything goes back to the spiritual. Um, it just goes back to remind me that what's for me is for me and only me. So, um, no matter at the end of the day, um, if something missed me, it wasn't for me. And, you know, even if somebody, Cause I, I mean, I have been mad. Do y'all tell I, when I tell y'all, I can't even <laughs> really let y'all know. Cause I, I really try to be an even temper person, but I have been downright pissed, just heated at my content being stolen or, you know, somebody not giving me credit or just, just, just letting that stuff really work me up feeling like, dang, this person used my stuff and then they got more, they and then they get more views than me or how you steal my stuff. And like, it's, it's even more frustrating when it's somebody who's larger than you. Like I have experienced it all. But again, I, you know, it's just one of those things that I tell myself is like, then that situation was it for me like if that wasn't the situation that I was meant to you know blow up or get noticed or um whatever the outcome that I'm feeling salty about you know like oh that was supposed to be me or whatever um then that wasn't that wasn't for me and at the end of that like I said there's always that paper trail for so many years things were covered up and whitewashed not only with our music but our culture even today ironically you know it started I already knew this but it started trending again that Betty Boop was um based off of a black woman even the initial cartoon was a black girl Betty Boop was black with that man said I am so happy that um it seems that now she is getting her credit because um like people were saying the most important thing that you know maybe people don't understand why it was upsetting for her because her being so young and maybe not necessarily even understanding a little bit of how society works she did say you know she could have been getting those sponsorships and she could have been getting that money and she could have been getting those endorsement deals had people known she created the dance and um i am gonna say that's a toss-up that's really a toss-up because um again even had people known had she created the dance i, I still think that there is like even if the TikTok dance came over move for move and the first person who transferred it over said that um Jalea created the dance like even if the proper credit was given I still personally feel like it's a toss-up on whether or not mainstream would have taken to her the way they did Charlie just because we see how mainstream takes to the black girls you know we judge them so much more harshly and we like seeing little black girl culture on little nine black girls so <laughs> I think that she has a very bright future ahead of her you know in dance and choreography and this this definitely is going to affect you know how she moves and how she protects herself and credits herself and even views you know how she maneuvers with other things so um and also just woke people up, you know, on TikTok. Like, almost ironic that the lesson that we want to teach on, you know, not stealing folks' content is kind of taught on a platform that is kind of meant to allow you to steal people's content. And so I just think um, moving forward, just we can be more mindful. Like, I feel like still we can still have fun on TikTok. And this just goes on any platform. I just think, you know... It, it these lessons especially on other platforms where it is you know more serious to kind of maybe probably not borrow somebody's ideas 
we can just be more mindful if you know you are doing something if you know that you were inspired i've said this before i feel like you are doing something that you did not create like it's just super simple real quick in the caption to say inspired by like it's not taking anything away from your content people are already looking at your content if they can read the caption inspired by or in the description box if you put the link to somebody else's youtube channel in your description box it is not hurting your youtube channel because they're already on your youtube channel so it's like it, you know i just think sometimes we just are so scared that somebody else is gonna get what's meant for us that you know we get a little selfish with the collaborative spirit <sighs> the law of attraction or just even getting what god has meant for you the tighter you try to call onto something you try to hold onto something the tighter that you try to have control over how something is supposed to happen or how it's supposed to go down the less control you're going to have on it and you know the the looser the grip you're going to have the tighter you hold the looser the grip is even if it's um tedious even if it's annoying like even if it's something um you know, that takes you an extra two minutes to do. You don't mind typing out them hashtags. You type out them hashtags every single time or you got them copied, you know, put it in a note somewhere where you can copy and paste and you go to it every time. You don't mind, you know, taking out the extra time to do that. It's levels, okay? And I'm telling you, my level is, I just can't worry about it no more. <laughs> I just, that's how I feel. I just feel like what's meant for me will never miss me. I Pray. I hope that people who are inspired by me will credit me and feel like, yes, I need every single like. If you looking, I want you to like. Like, I need my likes. I need my comments. I need my love. I, I need to be refreshed the same way y'all need to be refreshed, you know? So, um, I, I would hope that everybody would feel compelled to credit me when they're inspired by something or, you know, credit me even if they got popular off an idea and people associate that idea with them that they would still turn around and credit me even though now they're the person who popularized it but you know they know they got the idea from me that maybe they would shout me out every now and then and say hey i know y'all got the tip from me but i got the tip from her that would be nice but i know it ain't always gonna happen okay so i can't stress myself out about it and you can't stress yourself out about it too because at the end of the day one the receipt will always be complete <laughs> they'll always be there and what's for you is for you when your day comes it'll make sense and it'll be more perfect for you why maybe you needed to learn those lessons before or why maybe it just wasn't your timing like that maybe wasn't the thing that you needed to get popularized for like maybe in the grand scheme of things who knows god knew that maybe you were you wouldn't want to be associated with that forever you know that's not the thing that you wanted to go viral or go big or you know build your brand off of like right now it was just something that you needed to put in your resume put in your receipt book but that wasn't the thing like god knew that wasn't the thing this is the thing so that's how i look at it i am an eternal optimist so that is the eternal optimism in me so yeah that's it for this video guys i usually pull my hair up in a pineapple when it is um 90 to 100 percent dry just to help my hair you know stretch a little bit um kick out a little bit of that shrinkage of course we know you can't 100 percent just stop your hair from shrinking that is curly hair um i hope you guys enjoyed this video of course let me know no way down in the comment section below on the topic of the day um, what are the levels to I guess being inspired and you know stealing someone's content like what what is the line between being inspired by somebody and completely biting off of somebody if you have ever had something you know you feel like was bitten off of or you feel like somebody didn't give you credit for something also let me know you know how you handle that down in the comment section below do you completely ignore it do you feel like um copying is a form of flattery or do you feel like you know it's absolutely disrespectful um i just want to hear you guys thoughts on this whole situation from the situation on tiktok to how it relates to social media in general and you know if it has ever happened to you once again if this was your first time visiting my channel go ahead and subscribe because it's not going to be your last because you said 
through this whole video. Like if you are hearing me right now, you sat through this whole video. And so now YouTube is just going to, you know, recommend me and I'm going to be all over your timeline anyway. <laughs> so go ahead and subscribe, become my cousin. We don't bite. OG cousin say what's up and I will see all you guys in the next upload.